Great Barrier Reef is a, an iconic place. It's incredibly important, not just to the people of Australia, but to the people of the world. There is no place like it. This is the richest shallow water marine ecosystem on the planet. And it's a wonderful thing to be here. Although it looks so robust and you can see it from space, that gives it a, a sense of solidity. It's a geological structure that's been built over very long periods, but it is incredibly fragile. And that's because the, the corals themselves are very sensitive to environmental fluctuations and changes. Australia is rich in natural resources, but extracting those resources doesn't mean you have to destroy everything else about the lifestyle and the outdoors and the beauty that Australians cherish. So thinking about how you develop an area is absolutely critical to maintaining the values that people have, have come to appreciate. Development plans for the Queensland coast are absolutely extraordinary. They are haphazard, there's a lot of them being put forward, there's no kind of central planning, there's no joining up the pieces, there's no strategic plan for the coast, and it's going to be very destructive if it goes ahead like this. You, you really can't just develop willy-nilly along the coastline. You've got to uh, concentrate the development in certain places to minimize the impact, and it also means using best practices for the establishment of ports so that you minimize all of the impacts that are under your control. At the moment, what I've seen is that the port developments that are operating already, many of them haven't been operated according to those best practices. And so the costs to the environment have been much greater than they should have been. Well, there are a number of things that we need to be worried about, one of which is dredging of the ports and the, the access lanes for shipping to come in to load up at the facilities. That dredging is an ongoing process. You have to continuously dredge to keep those lanes clear, the material has to be disposed of somewhere, and the amount that's being talked about now is millions and millions of, of cubic meters of spoil material. When you build a port, the impacts are not just felt in the immediate surroundings of the port. What happens is that the dredge material which is taken out to deepen the channels gets moved offshore. That can then be moved around by uh, offshore currents. It can be stirred up by cyclonic storms and that then can move it out towards the coral reef. One of the problems with uh, the dredge spoil material is that the corals really don't like sediment. Silty environments are anathema to healthy coral reef growth. And so what you have to do is avoid putting silt in areas close to coral reefs. This is what we can expect to see happening if the industrial plans go ahead. If people value the Great Barrier Reef and want to have it around for their children and their children's children, they're going to have to take care of it right now. If we proceed with the development of the Queensland coast in the way that it's been proposed, the reef's future is very bleak, frankly. Now is the time to rescue the Great Barrier Reef from development once again. That was how the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park began in the 1970s, through the threat of limestone and oil and gas mining. Today it's threatened by a new wave of industrialization and development and it needs to be saved once more.